Hey everyone, welcome back to EIS Alaska. So, uh, here we're starting a new series. It's our Project Backlog series. Um, in the months leading up to our boat haul out on episode 59, uh, there's a ton of footage that we couldn't quite get to uh, before we wanted to share something a little more up to date. Um, if you hop over to episode 59 of uh, the Emerald Isle Project, you'll I guess we'll uh, explain more there, but uh, to keep it short, um, there's a lot of footage to go through, so uh, we didn't want to waste it, so we're kind of posting it in a separate video series to avoid confusion. So um, in these series of videos, you'll find us doing many things, uh, stuff that has already kind of been done on the up-to-date series that's ongoing. Uh, you'll see undone and redone because we just want to share it. So, uh, yeah, please enjoy the videos. Uh, if you like, be sure to comment, subscribe, and uh, yeah, we'll see you guys in the video. All right, everyone. So we're back down here on the Emerald Isle. Surprise, surprise. Once again. Wearing our nice white duds. So we've got our bulkhead piece here that's been down in fish hold for a while, seven, a while now. <laughs> uh, we glassed up the other side this morning. So we have this side that's been done. That's the side we originally laminated and it was the full panel cut out that shape. And this morning we cut this glass and laminated it. So ready to get a trim. Yep, gonna tidy up these edges and think about installing it. Think about gluing it in. Yeah. Which is quite exciting. So we got the hole prepped up earlier and it's ready to go. Yep, right. Uh, this here. turned out really nice and nice and rigid. It's uh Yeah, there's barely a sixteenth of of movement there in the center. So this will still uh, it'll have a second layer against it and then on both sides where the bin boards go there'll be something similar to this so essentially like framing that will be on the outside a couple stacks of it slot in between all of that will get glassed it'll make it a really extremely rigid structure at that point um, so there's not going to be any worry about blowing this wall out or anything We'll probably put uh, a brace in or outboard of the um, bin board holders, and so we'll have two on each side, and then probably pull one right in the middle yep. of the shaft alley. So five total, and that's really like oh, uh, that's going to be somewhere like on a twenty-ish, twenty-four inch center, I suppose, somewhere like that. Mm. At any rate, uh, those will be on each side of it, so it'll be very very strong when we're done um, that's how you add a lot of rigidity to to things like that it's just like the framing inside of a house essentially except the wall on this is very very rigid to start with so once there's a second layer on there it's going to be pretty much bail proof anyways but we do need bin board holders so we're just going to incorporate it into there and it kind of kills two birds with one stone essentially mm -hmm. So super happy with that. Got another panel over there that's ready to trim. Uh, we'll cut a piece out of it for our our first uh, section that comes over to the shaft alley. And we'll work on getting that lined up. So we basically just did the same, uh, basically did the same thing as before. We just laid down a couple layers of mat. Uh, had to build up the stringer right here a little bit repair some damage there um, everything else looks good these are glued in these are ready to glue in yeah so we're all ready to go down here um, get that piece glued in and then we'll figure out the distance for this next one we'll put a full-size panel in here which is uh, 40 inches and so it'll be roughly ending about right here that kind of gives us something in about a two foot section that we'll cut out of that big panel up there. We'll cut it for uh, for height and then we'll cut it for width 
and the piece that's left over becomes a uh, top of the shaft alley. It just works out to, to about the eighth of an inch, I think. All right, guys, so we're gonna drop this wall chunk down. Got a little bit of fitting to do first, probably, so put it in place and see how it looks. Yeah, I get things squared up. Oh God, it's heavy now. I'll come give you a hand. All right, everyone. So we got our fiddling done with. There's our bulkhead wall. We have a couple of straps of wood on the back side to limit it going that direction. And on this side, we have a piece of wood which will wedge between that divider wall there <laughs> and the bulkhead there. And that'll take out a slight bow that's in our laminate. And um, yeah, that's about it. I mean, we're all ready to go. We'll mix up some some resin and some putty and glue this wall in, huh, Dad? Yeah, ready to rock it. Yeah, exciting times. Mm-hmm. Hand this to you to mount up somewhere, and I'll pour the catalyst. And we'll go for it. I better move that before I spill it everywhere somehow. This isn't quite as easy as it is for that anymore. Seems like it should be fine. Yeah. I'm going to have resin everywhere when I'm done. Imagine that. I think you got a kick. Lots of fingers, dude. Yeah, that was about finger. Push the bottom in. Things. Uh, yeah, I'm heading against mine. Here, let's get this clamp on there. And... I think it could be against the hole from, so let me just get the hole on here. Don't need to. Right there. Yep. 
Good. Yep. She gonna stay? And she'll stay. <laughs> Showing off your elaborate webs, huh? Yep. Little gap down in here, but the rest of it's pretty tight. We'll have to put a little little spacer right there. The rest of it looks good. It looks great. Yeah. Slippery hole. Slip inside. Right oh. Well, we'll just get all this putty packed in these cracks and corners and maybe a little bit of mat to hold it in place. I don't know. Then tomorrow get a good fillet on it and uh some tabbing and it should be good to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we've got our bulkhead here glued in yesterday. And we've got this panel here. We uh, trimmed the edges on a freshly laminated panel this morning and then cut it in, cut the end off for height there and then cut it in half hot dog style yep. to uh, put our next bulkhead piece in here. So we've just spent a little while fitting it up. Um, got this notched for the stringer right there. And we're just about to slide it in. We want a full size sheet right here and the smaller panel on each side. And then we'll have bracing more or less in line with this. It'll line up with these because that's for the uh, bin boards. So there'll be a brace right in here that will uh, incorporate the the uh, bracket for the bin boards is actually just all going to be glassed in. Mm -hmm. Basically, we'll just take some layers of foam and we'll build it up with a gap in the middle, and that way the bin boards can slide into it. So we kind of kill two birds with one stone. We're going to get a lot of rigidity out of that, a lot of framing. It's going to make this this wall solid as a rock. Yeah, make it nice and clean too. Um, there, there, we had aluminum C channel. That was uh, the the uh, bin board holders before, so that'll that will eliminate the need to put it on our brand new foam wall. Yeah, so we won't bulkhead. have the penetrations for the bolts going through. Is one major advantage of it, and then it is it's a lot easier to clean. Uh, it doesn't corrode. So uh, back to this, we saved you the slow fiddly part. Hopefully, we got it in here pretty close. Might have to trim it up a little bit more. It was kind of a hassle. Um, we decided just to notch this little bit of wood out right here as opposed to just having it butt up to the bottom like here. And so uh, most of it was pretty easy, but of course this post is all end grain so you can't just like notch it and working in a tight area we didn't want to take down our guide up here. But it all worked out. Of course there was a bolt in there too that we had to chew through. Um, <laughs> Can't be easy. No, not not that one. So we keep saying that we're done with demo. Maybe we just have one little spot left. Yeah, sure maybe. We'll find more wood to chew into. So we've got our next piece of uh, bulkhead here. It's a piece that goes on the starboard side, over against the hull. Yeah, it's all uh, rough fitted. We did a little bit of layup here yesterday and that's all prepped now. This piece is ready to go in. Might have to do a little bit of final trimming on the bottom. We'll see if it still fits okay. Yeah, where the notch is on the bottom there, um, it goes on the stringer, which we reinforced. It was kind of in rough shape, so fix that up, as well as put our CSM layer down against the hole where the, uh, where the bulkhead will land. Yeah, and we also got um, the second panel is cut and trimmed is four inches shorter to give us a nice overlap of our panels. So it's ready to go up top once this one's in place and glued in, then we can look at getting the next one glued in. Um, same thing over here, we have our second piece ready to go, we just haven't dropped it in there yet. Yeah, we were kind of 
I guess we've kind of worked out our idea behind gluing that piece in. I guess we'll probably explain it once we get to it, but basically put a layer of regular fiberglass on there and stick the next layer on and kind of brace it in and uh, put some screws through it to suck them together. Make sure there's no air voids in between the layers. I guess I'll try and rustle this thing in a place and put my mask on. It seems like everything's really dusty down here. I'm stirring it up all morning. A little bit awkward. Yeah, no great hand holds on that thing because it goes flat against the hull, so you don't like you can keep your fingers in the crack. I guess up next we'll uh, start fitting the sheet, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Boys got a panel laminated up yesterday, so I guess we'll drag it off the table and uh, get it trimmed up. getting ready to glue in some chunks of bulkhead. The spot you just saw that white is for this chunk here. Goes down in there such as that. Just goes down in there like that. That's the bottom of our bulkhead like over here on the port side. And uh, I think that we didn't film it but the other day we laid down a strip of, um, of fiberglass against the hole and also reinforce these stringers here. Just need a little beefing up, so we did that. And uh, after that, we fit in the last chunk of our bulkhead. So um, now we can get this piece glued in permanently and tabbed, and then we'll be able to put in the, the next layer of this bulkhead this piece can go in and then the doubler piece can go on here and uh, we can do the same on that side 
We have to wait on this last center piece until we get our tail shaft here because we'll be able to drop that in through the fish hold and put it uh, back in just the opposite of the way the old one came out. I think I did my last bit of demo yesterday and that was uh, cutting just a, I don't know, three quarter inch of this block down right here. So our bulkhead wall can go up there and just kind of key in a little bit. So I think, fingers crossed, that's my last piece of demo for some time. It seems that way, yeah. Mm-hmm, yeah. Yeah, we got a, got a lot going on. It's come together. Yep. So. This is just a tiny little brace to square that, um, that bulkhead up. It's got, it's bowed forward about an eighth of an inch. The thing is really rigid. Uh, I pushed on it and, and moved it about a 32nd. So <laughs> even just one layer laminate on both sides, that thing is really, excuse me, uh, really, really rigid. So once there's another layer on that and then we put reinforcing framing on it, yeah, no worries. It's all good. So we're gonna get some uh, resin mixed up. I guess we'll wet this out and whip up a big old batch of Putty, putty, structural putty, and slather it on here and then gently rustle it into place and hopefully not smear that stuff everywhere in the process. <laughs> Some putty. We'll get that cleaned up here. Yeah, I should probably find something to wedge in over here, huh? Yeah. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, good fit up. So after this dries into place, we'll come through and put a putty on it, give it a nice uh, radius there, and then we'll do our heavy tabbing. That's what happens when your resin starts to gel. So I could use a little bit of this stuff that's still liquid, but if you tried to use that on a layup or something, a laminate, you're just wasting your time. You get little globs of gel in there and it's just aggravate you. Ruin your job. Yep. Can't do anything with it. That stuff is going off quick for some reason. I set it down on the hole where it's cooler, but yeah, whatever. That's kind of odd actually. Usually the best way to do this if you're gonna be like working on an area that's kind of time consuming like corners or putting in a bunch of little pieces of mat or filling up a void or a, a hole or something is that you'd want to pour this into a shallow container. You spread the resin out thin, it can't build exothermic heat. That's what makes it kick fast, is the heat. If you leave it in a container like this, if this was half full of resin and you let it kick in here, the stuff will start smoking, be hot, it'll burn you, be so hot. Probably even catch fire under the right conditions, maybe. Yeah, potentially. Potentially could, so.
right, folks. I got this all set up to glue this uh, next piece of this bulkhead in here. Wipe down all the edges with some acetone. Um, I got a couple of little blocks of wood in here to help register it against, and I can put a screw through there, pull the two panels together, and loosen up a little screw or tighten one up on one side or the other in order to get them flush. A little scrap of plastic in between, it's just pinched in there. Uh, keep from gluing that board on there, that's kind of annoying. Good idea. And uh, other than that, we just wet out all the edges with some resin and got some structural putty going in here. Put a heavy bead in here. It's a pretty tight fit on this, so we won't need as much. There's gonna be a lot of squeeze out, but that's okay. We'll just come back in with the spatula and clear off the excess and we'll go throw it in a corner somewhere for a uh, fillet. These joints will be pretty easy to come back in if we got a spot where it's not quite thick enough. Uh, it'll be easy enough to force it in there after the panel's up there, so I'm not too worried if we're a little bit light. It's actually pretty tight up here at the top, it's a little looser at the bottom. Yep. All right, folks. Well, we'll just work on uh, packing our our putty into these cracks. And uh, there's a the panels are off a little bit. It's just from laying them up. It's only only so perfect. Uh, Pierre will just do the same thing. We'll just clean this up and fair it out a bit and then it'll all get covered up with uh, probably three layers anyways of some uh, 45, some 1708. Strips down there that'll tie these panels together and then we'll build out our framing and that'll just get covered and basically tabbed into the sides too and make a good strong, very strong support. All right, everyone. Welcome back. It's an exciting day. Yeah, plugging away down here. Yep, about Just to. Just getting ready to glue in the second layer of our bulkhead, the two curved pieces that tab into the outside of the hole. Yeah, so we did a little bit of fitting this morning. Uh, general prep too. Uh, drilled some holes in the bulkhead to where we can put screws through and suck the two halves together making sure there's no big air voids or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, a minute ago, I cut up the pieces to laminate one side. We're just gonna do a layer of mat and a layer of 45 to stick the two halves together. Uh, there's always a, already a full layup of uh, thickness on that side. Yeah, so. so both sides of the existing pieces are already laminated. So we'll just add another layer of chop strand to that one, that'll help bind it really well to the foam, and then just a layer of 45 just to kind of glue it all together, just add one more layer of rigidity and toughness in there, and I mean, we should be good. Yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll laminate that, and then I guess scoop the whole side, I think, huh? Would probably be easiest. I think that'd be best, so. Yeah, a few spots like up here, we can just pinch a block in there. Um, down here, we'll just screw in a couple of blocks to push it in against this existing one. And then we just put like six holes along here and we'll just run some screws through. We're using just some uh, long wood screws. We were careful to select them that they don't have the, um, like the self-tapping cut in them because we don't want it to grab 
the fabric and spin it up. It's pretty vital that you don't do that, and it will happen with other screws. You'll grab it and wrap it up, and then you'll end up with a big ball right there of, of fabric, and you won't be able to get your layers down tight. So um, we should just be able to feed these through, hand, through by hand carefully, and once that tip clears, then we're good to go. Come out the back side. And uh, what's the hell about that? <laughs> and we have a, a piece of plywood for the other side to, to run these screws into and, and pull it good and tight. So yeah, um, like Matt said, I think we'll just put a heavy layer of putty against the hole as opposed to putting it on the actual piece we're fitting in. That way we don't smear it all over the place. It's already gonna be hard enough to deal with with a couple of layers of of laminate on it that are wet and hopefully not too floppy and falling off. It shouldn't be falling off. <laughs> nah, it'll be it fine. It's falling off and solid correctly, so. Yeah. Matt's been testing out the new cutter back there. It's super sweet. Very, very nice. Yeah, so uh, I guess we'll get rolling out here, uh, mix up some resin, and yeah, start this layup. Yeah. Got the putty in the corners. Just wetted out that uh, the face of that. Other one's got the fresh laminate on it. Let's make a mess. Gonna be a big sticky awkward thing. Trying to wrestle it in there, not smear off our laminate. I don't know. We'll see. If you stand there, I'll just slide it down that way. Sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you better come on down.
guy as well. One side done. Start working on the other side here. And uh, yeah, it's coming together. I like it. I like the progress. I like how it's turning out. Yeah. Well, we got the second layer of our bulkhead glued into the hull, glued into the back layer. <clears throat> it's about a four inch overlap right here. Um, our next panel will be a full piece or a full width 140 inches come into about right here and that will leave about a 16 inch piece to go in between the two. So we'll get this is a full piece one right here the, the back layer and then the next one will overlap this overlap the seam make a really strong joint like that. Super happy with it turned out great just going to bust down all these uh, blocks and wedges and supports that we got in there and move over to this side and do the same. And, uh, hopefully this thing doesn't like fall off of here because that would be a sad day. So that's good. Um, all we got to do is just come back and just fill these holes right here. We're not. There won't be any hardware or anything inside here. Uh, it's, it's all laminated together now, so it's not necessary. Um, we do have some long structural screws that will run into this beam up here to tie it in. There's no glue up here. Nothing like physically holding it against the beam right there. And so we'll put in some, some long screws throughout here to tie that together. It just didn't make any sense to try and actually bond it to that beam just because most likely it wouldn't stick anyways. Yeah, there's still moisture in it. So. Yeah, there's moisture in it. And it's, yeah, it's just not really necessary. The important thing is fiberglass to fiberglass. Bond it in, tab it in, get to the hull. Up here, that old decking will all go away one day and be redone anyways. So at that time then we'll just come in there and we'll just cut those those bolts and and uh, and tie it into the new stuff however um, we'll use the same concept of these sumps when we do the sides we have our fo forms in here like this one uh, we just put relief cuts in it so we can get the curve of the hull this will actually curve fine way up there and we'll just come in and after this is all glued in and laminated down, we'll just come in and we'll cut holes in there and pour our foam in. It'll just expand right up the wall. No worries, when we get to the very top, probably have to use some, some canned foam, mm -hmm. but that's fine. Okay. I just put another little cut there at the top. It might need another one, I don't know. Uh, We'll just get it roughly positioned here and see. I have a mark right here so I know about how far my first piece will go. So I'm just going to position it approximately and we'll put a hole in it here. Right into the old skin. Screw to hold it tight. And there we go. Now we can just start getting it kind of roughed in here. That looks real good. Yeah. Uh, nice. That flex is really easy. The second I put the 
relief cut in that. It's just like, <laughs> no worries. Cool. Yeah, so double air will be fine for all those. Right. And that's gonna, that's gonna make it nice and easy. So we'll just put a couple of screws in here, wherever it needs it, and then uh, when we go to, to glue this in, we'll just have a, a screw on each one of these tabs, and we'll putty it up and, and screw it in there, and that'll be that. Once that uh, putty hardens up, we'll have a, a very strong surface here. And then we'll just blend this in like we did back there. These will probably get trimmed back a little bit. Yeah, that's going to save a lot of uh, a lot of putty by not having to put these radiuses in on this. And over here we've got the multi-use form. <laughs> um, I'm working on laminate number 20 that's coming out of this thing. Yeah, so this is made uh, 20 parts now, and we really never intended it to, to be used that much. Um, quite frankly, I thought we were gonna get six parts out of that, our initial uh, six pieces that we used on the sump. Um, ended up also using it for the back sump, all of the, the outside corners that, that transitioned from the sump to the old fiberglass. Uh, two bulkhead pieces and so we've been super happy with this got a lot of comments in the first video where we showed this um, a lot of good comments the reason that we used uh, painters tape is that it does release good the finish isn't important because it's all getting covered with more the important things have been the radiuses uh, the first part that we pulled out of the mold, it looked like we had a pretty tough time. It actually came out really easy. We were just kind of taking it slow because we didn't want to damage it. We weren't really quite sure how strong it would be. Um, all the other parts have just popped out fine. So also going on down here, that'll bring you down a bit, but this is a flat piece of laminate that I had laid up yesterday on this chunk of uh, I don't know, I, I think it's just like shower wall uh, plastic. I had thrown a layer of PVA I think it's on it. FRP, fiberglass reinforced plastic. Uh -huh. um, the back side is fairly smooth, the other side's got that really kind of ripply, corrugated look. Yeah. You see it in bathroom stalls everywhere. Mm -hmm. The back side worked out real good, it was smooth enough released really easy yeah one layer of pva and actually the pva stayed on it so i didn't even have to recode it or anything yeah which is pretty some, cool some people mentioned about just laying up on plastic um if you're not worried about the finish of the part you certainly can what tends to happen though is this stuff will kind of get hot and, and stretch or melt it doesn't melt through but it'll definitely stretch so you'll end up with ripples like really bad so matt actually made one part just on the plastic and yeah it, yeah, it looked terrible. It looked terrible. It was for um, the piece that I'm going to glue in down there, and it, it just wasn't usable. But yeah, <laughs> it's hard to believe we got this much mileage out of this form. Yeah, crazy actually. Um, this is the other part here. We did pour some foam in here. Uh, we used like plastic on a piece of plywood. This is what happens, that plastic, the heat of, the, of whatever, this, this makes exothermic heat too. And uh, it, it just loosens up the plastic and you get wrinkles in it. And so uh, we just did that one little piece and it's like, you know what, let's just make a laminate. We'll glue it in there, then we'll finish pouring. And, uh, and we'll do the same thing over here. This one's gonna be a little bit bigger gonna have a lot of foam coming up through here um, we just wanted to kind of level this out in this area make it a little safer to work make our, our bin boards we'll go right here we'll have a, a stack of bin boards coming up where they used to be that'll make a nice level surface for those to go back in boys got the last two laminates done here they're ready to get trimmed up and cut down to size uh, one of them is the second layer, the forward layer of the bulkhead. And then the other one is going to be used to cut reinforcing braces, kind of like external framing that'll go on the bulkhead up and down. 
It'll be positioned on that side, corresponding to where the, uh, the bin boards go. So it'll be a combination of a reinforcing frame for the bulkhead to resist any outward pressure or any pressure going aft when we fill this up with water. And then it'll also be the, uh, the bracket to hold the bin board. So it'll kind of serve a dual purpose there. All right, we got that chunk done. Dad got his piece there done, and I'm just starting to laminate another flat chunk for the other side over on the starboard. Meanwhile, Dad's down here gluing the first flat in. Yeah! California! I drilled a couple of holes so I know where to register this. Lamination station. This is a piece that came with the boat. As a matter of fact, it is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't think that we'd ever use it for anything. And that's why we got a big pile of junk around our house. You know, we're kind of like farmers in a way. The stuff's expensive and you throw it away, then you eat it. Um, so we try not to throw too much away. We'll go through and purge once in a while and clean up, but uh, we try and save stuff that looks like it'll be practical to use somewhere, sometime. Yep. All right, folks. Well, I guess that's about it for today. We're just gonna finish up this little bit here and we're gonna knock off I think. Yeah, we'll bring you back once we we'll bring you back once we demold them. Yeah. Show you the the satisfying heel. That's right. So back down here next morning after a few uh, laminations uh, we're just about to demold these. Dad's got his part here. I laid up a flat lamination for the other side of the aft bulkhead or aft fish hold and then this last chunk right here. So we'll go ahead and demold these guys. So this should just kind of like pop right off. I just used one of our plugs from a hatch that we cut out of the panel because it's nice and flat. Worked out real good. Nice finish. See how this one parts off, came off really nice last time. Same thing as over here. So I'll start, probably get this cut today. Get it striped out and trimmed and just kind of put into place. Ah, this pops right out, anyways. stick to the wood but like all the adhesive of the tapes over the course of 20 different parts has uh, 
become attached to the wood. No, it's just like there's a gooey layer there. <laughs> and the actual tape of each laminate doesn't really stick to it anymore. But, okay, it's, it's doing what it needs to do. Yep, it's demolding, and then you just come back through and pull the tape off like that. Quite stringent. Nice finish. Perfect for what we got going on, so. These are going to be a pretty important part of our bulkhead that we're going to integrate. Uh, it's going to serve two purposes. We've spoke about this in the past, so those of you that have been following along know what we got going on here. And those of us, uh, those of you that don't, are about to find out, I guess. So, um, so assuming that this table right here is our bulkhead that's straight up and down as in that bulkhead right there. Our concern is even though this is gonna be very strong, two layers of uh, one inch foam with a quarter inch web in between, quarter inch layer of glass on each side, this fish hold will be full of water when we tank down. So we gotta got make sure that we're not gonna blow this, this bulkhead out and uh, not only have a catastrophic failure of a bulkhead, but uh, risk losing our vessel as a result. So these are going to get glassed in to that bulkhead, straight up and down vertically. And there'll be a slot in the middle, which will receive uh, bin boards, which uh, prevents your, your catch or your load from shifting. So it's kind of a, a dual purpose thing. Not only does it hold our bin boards in place, uh, we're replacing some aluminum channel that was there before, but we also have the reinforcement of these. These will be laminated, tabbed into the hole, in between each other and back over, and when they're done, they'll be extremely rigid. Um, just essentially uh, uh, building a frame in there, uh, just like you would have in a, in a house or a building, so. Um, we're pretty confident that we won't have any problems with these bulkheads without this, but uh, you know, like I say, this is serving two purposes. We have to have something to hold our bin boards in. The only other alternative is to take aluminum channel and bolt it in there. Then we're putting penetrations through our nice foam core 
and we want to avoid that and um, and we're also going to beef up the structure so there is absolutely no doubt in my mind or any worry in our mind that that it's going to be strong and secure mm -hmm. it'll also cover up uh, this a couple of the seams from uh, the assembly of the bulkhead yeah that's panels. true yep even though we've overlapped these panels the two panels there is uh, upright seams um, like I say the seams are staggered in relation to each other but nonetheless there's still seams so these uh, these reinforcements will go basically where that uh, tape measure is but up and down up and down the bulkhead right there and then the tabbing will go over that seam and it just reinforce it more so you can probably tell things are an absolute disaster around here just a lot of cutting and a lot of fit in the last few days that generates an enormous amount of dust and debris but uh, we've totally maximized our panels here uh, the only waste is an eighth inch um, eighth inch width of the blade in between these because we just mirrored the angle and just careful layout so we cut the first one with the angle in it and then we come back in and we cut the next one straight and like I say careful layout has ensured that that the sides are flush on both sides that's gonna save us a lot of time when we uh, lay them up together and then also save us having to do a lot of grinding to get the surfaces even alrighty folks well got some bin board bracket slash uh, frames going up here I mean, I got the first one laminated looks great super happy with it um, so I just wanted to show you how quickly you build strength into this stuff when you put two pieces together and you laminate it so uh, here's one that's basically just cut and ready to go it needs to be glued together this is a basic layup that we've done on everything it's just shy of a quarter inch and so the two together like that you can see that it's got some flex that's 10 pounds there's 20 pounds these two have been glued together so just a single layer of uh, uh, ounce and a half mat gluing those two pieces together we'll throw the same amount of weight on it 20 pounds still a little bit of deflection in it and now this one that he's laminated together we'll put a little block of wood on there and then we'll just add about 200 pounds so I am one standing dead. on that and there's hardly eh, there's a little bit of deflection maybe a quarter inch maybe three eighths yeah about three eighths I'd say yeah so this is uh, a layer of uh, ounce and a half mat went down on this and then a layer of 2408 and a layer of 1708 so a layer of 0 090 24 ounce um, cloth and then a layer of 17 ounce uh, plus minus 45 so the, the weave goes that way and then a layer mat on top of that so it's not the the full build this will get tabbed into the bulkhead which is going to essentially add like two more layers to that i guess mm -hmm. and um you can see the amount of strength in that already yeah that's pretty impressive yeah so we'll basically have um we're going to have a set of two on each side so they'll basically be spaced about like these two are right here And then the same configuration leaving a slot in the middle and then we'll laminate up and over down in against the bulkhead back up and down 
and so they'll get several layers. They'll probably come in this way with the layer, that way with the layer, and then get this U shape with the layer. Well, several layers. Um, that'll leave a channel in here for our bin boards to slot into, and it'll make our bulkhead nice and, and rigid and sturdy, so we don't have to worry about it bowing or trying to blow out. Um, super happy with that so you can only imagine after you you put two of these on each side uh, and then we'll have one in the center and then on the main hold we'll also have a set of these also for the bin boards on that side so that's going to stiffen that bulkhead up really good so uh, provide all the support it needs so yeah coming yeah. right along pretty happy with that with mm -hmm. that result <laughs> Yeah, it really does put a lot of strength into those when you when you start to laminate the stuff together. Well, as you can hear, Dad's down there doing some grinding. Over here, we've got our uh, bulkhead braces slash uh, bin board holders. Got them all laminated up. He's just uh, trimming up the last set of them down there in the fish hold. We'll go down there and see what he's up to. So what would you rate your flat sanding disc? Very good. So these are 24 grit. They remove uh, material really fast. Um, they do a good job. I've done a lot of grinding with this one now. It's just starting to clog up a little bit, but it still still shreds. So just a quick sand with that old. Uh, Yeah. 
Now we're just kind of doing the final prep here to start tapping this bulkhead into the hole. Got a little bit of cleanup to do, some spots where some putty was sticking up and sharp. Just try and screw those edges off and blend them so we lay our fabric down. It goes down nice without floating. No air pockets or big pumps of resin in there anywhere. So I think we're pretty good about ready to just wipe everything down and start laminating. These are the uh, just divider walls in the front hole here and the uh, fiberglass job on them was inadequate so he took the gel coat off. It was pretty much just, I think they just threw a slap of resin on it and then gel coat it over it for the most part. But we'll come through here for a chunk of uh, 45 2x4 and a slap it in. So we came through and trimmed that back and then ground back that gel coat so that we can tie in that uh, skin that we fabricated. So he's done all that. Back here, he started uh, removing gel coat on all these little patches that need to be fixed up and sealed up, as well as the uh, combing up here so that we can take and wrap glass around it, like that. How would you rate your, uh, your grinding experience the last few days? Incredible. <laughs> Extremely fulfilling on a physical and mental level. Really one of those opportunities that you just never want to pass up. So yeah, Dad's already cleaned up the aft area over there, but as you can see, this is probably uh, not near as bad as it was back there. Buckets and buckets of dust. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well.
So if you're ever doing this kind of work, dump mats are super good for cleanup. Don't use the, the blue filter though. Get yourself one of these nice pleated ones. You can see even though it's completely loaded up, this thing is still pulling a lot of dust through. I think we've been using this filter for several years now on these kind of jobs. As long as you keep them dry, they do really good. If you need to wash them out, you can rinse them out and then dry them. They'll keep working for a long time. Pull it out. This one's actually a little bit damp, so... Things getting so old, it's actually getting kind of floppy, but still doing a good job. On this one. All right, a little bit cleaner now. <laughs> oh boy, it's quite a uh, blizzard down here earlier. The dust bowl. So we've got the dehumidifier going over here. Just gonna try and pull some of the moisture out of the air down the hold here. Yeah, it seems like it's been a little bit clammy down here. Yep. It uses my imagination, but I don't think it's gonna hurt anything. Um, we're probably gonna start tabbing this tomorrow. It's, uh, it's all prepped. The surfaces are all ground down good, roughed up. Yeah, we'll just uh, wipe it down with some acetone first when we get going, and that'll pull any exit or uh, any remaining moisture off the surface if there is any. We'll get it clean get it, it up. Clean. Yeah, you can see I hit that with that 24 grit, a fresh sanding disc, and you can see how it really keyed that up good. Um, I'm confident we'll get a good bond here. This is the original layer that we put down before our bulkhead went in. I think we put, what, two layers of mat right here? Yep. Yeah, and you can see that those tied in really good to the hole, so we shouldn't have any problems with delamination. Um, it's all in prep. You know, it's almost like impossible to really goof up fiberglassing when it comes to actually putting the stuff down as long as you wet your material out well and don't oversaturate it, but don't make a dry layup. But I think the important thing, just like about everything, is in your prep. Yeah. If you, if you don't prep a house well before you paint it, your paint's gonna fall off. Same thing for your car. You know, it's all about the prep work and that's where you're gonna spend a good majority of your time. Mm -hmm. Spend the time in the front instead of dealing it with it in the back. Yeah, if you don't, if you don't take the time to prep it right, you're your results are not going to be what you want and there's a good chance that it's just going to outright fail over time and um, that's the last thing you want to do is throw a bunch of expensive materials and time 
you know, your time is worth a lot too. You don't want to put all that in there and just have a, a project that fails. Yep. Because you didn't take enough time uh, to do a good prep job. And I'm not gonna lie, it's not fun. It, it hasn't been fun down here grinding, and uh, but it's just part of the game. And I know that it's worth it. Actually, I love it. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I love to just sit here and grind. It's kind of a mindless task. If you have good gear, it's not too bad. Uh, but I'm happy to be where we're at. Um, yeah, this is this is ready to go now. Yeah, so this is a good project. We're getting there. I know it seems like a lot of work, a lot of money to people, but you know, this is a long-term investment for us, and this, uh, this job, we'll never have to do this job again in our lifetime. At least I don't anticipate it will. And that's a nice feeling to, to know that the bones are good. That's, that's, what, that's what we needed uh, going into this and for the long-term project, stuff that we'll never have to come back and deal with later. So we're getting there. We're getting there. Happy with how it turned out. It's gonna start coming together pretty quickly. Yeah. I'm excited to start tying those in. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. I guess uh, for now that's it. Um, we'll bring you guys back tomorrow once we start tapping this thing out.